Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest, busy, 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 busiest music nerd, very busy this week. Uh, yesterday's Kanye review, insanity, uh, it seems like my review either wasn't scathing enough, or wasn't positive enough, or just wasn't... Hey Anthony, I'm real happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish, but you should really stay on topic here because uh, this is not your, uh, your Kanye review. You know what? He's right. This is the new Agalock record, Marrow of the Spirit. These guys are an Oregon outfit whose music just seems to kind of be a term magnet. Black metal, post-rock, folk, doom metal. And in a way it's true, this new LP and Agalock's three previous albums are pretty genre-bending, but from my point of view, black metal really is the most obvious stylistic influence. For fans of the more classic, more popular sounds in black metal, for the most part they're here, tremolo picking, the really thrashy drum beats, of course the wretched vocals. But in a way we're kind of sailing on a very different ship here. Unlike a lot of black metal artists, the recording quality on this thing is very clean. And frontman John Hoggum, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, if I'm not I f He does scream on here, but there are a lot of chilling whispers on here that sound as if death is kind of breathing down your neck. On the Watcher's monolith, there's this really strange, eerie, old man vocal that kind of comes in. It's very clean, it's played straight, but it just sounds very archaic. I don't know. And on the fourth track, around the seven minute mark, he lets out this really tortured howl that just chilled me to the bone and just got me standing at attention. Really fantastic. There is a heavy folk influence on this thing too, which shouldn't be a surprise if you're already a fan of these guys. There are a lot of acoustic guitar strumming chords underneath harmonized guitar solos, lots of Nordic melodies. And it's not just like this thing switches off between, ooh, it's electric, now it's folk. Ooh, it's electric, now it's folk. This thing is constantly blending the two in different fashions. What I love about Agalock on this LP is they have an extreme, extreme appreciation for dynamics and layers. And in a way it reminds me of how overworked folk elements into their early work. Another band this LP reminds me of, and maybe you guys saw this coming, is Wolves in the Throne Room. Also a West Coast metal band, also very black metal influenced, also very ambitious, very atmospheric music. I especially see a lot in common with these guys in terms of song lengths. The tracks here are long as hell, one of the longest being 17 minutes. And one of the most amazing things about this, maybe the biggest success of that album, is that Agalock manages to stay engaging throughout every moment of this LP for me. A track may start with some crickets, maybe some water, just some nature sounds, build into a guitar intro, some rumbles, some weird sounds, bring in the drums, bring on the vocals, start building it up, layer those guitars out, change up the vocal style, bring it to a climax, boil it down to a drone, another guitar interlude, explode one more time, bow out, close curtain. These tracks are constantly changing from one idea to another. None of them are stagnant. It's a really progressive record, but it's not flashy. It's very well recorded, but it still manages to maintain a dark atmosphere and some harsh sounds as well. And in terms of gripes, I really don't have many in comparison to their earlier work, uh, especially their last LP, Ashes Against the Grain. This album is not as heavy. I would say. It doesn't get as pummeling, it doesn't reach that point of high volume, but I feel like that was a conscious choice here. The band has kind of swapped out that overbearing distortion for more sounds and more melody, and it might not have been a bad exchange. If you're a person who likes their music to be very immediate, I could see this thing dragging on for you. And even for some black metal fans, the vocals here might feel maybe a little silly, maybe a little jokey. Who knows? But from where I'm standing, this album doesn't feel like that at all. I'm feeling a decent 8 on this thing, but I feel like I'm, I'm still yet 
to understand the album completely. It really unfolds. There's a lot to listen to, and there's a lot to uncover with repeated listens. It's one of those albums, and I love music like that. I'm putting this thing on the love list. What did you guys think of it? Did you enjoy it? Do you take Agalock seriously? Are they an important black metal band, or do most black metal fans shun these guys for their popularity outside of the genre? And also, should I review this tomorrow? Should I review that tomorrow? And if not this, what? What should I review? Anthony Fantano, Agalock, Marrow of the Spirit, Forever.